So we know that microplastics are in every guy's testicles now. Mine, yours, your neighbors down the road, we all have them in us. And this obviously has huge implications for your testosterone levels. But how much exactly are they reducing it? And is there a way to get them out? That's what I want to talk about in this video. Okay, so microplastics are defined as less than five millimeters in size, and they come from things like plastic packaging, synthetic clothing, cosmetics, car tires, and pretty much every industry product that you can imagine. These tiny pieces enter your body through the food you eat, the water you drink, and even the air that you breathe. And once they're inside, they deposit in your organs and tissues, including your testicles. A 2024 study made headlines by showing that microplastics were found in 100% of testicle samples that they tested. That means this isn't a theoretical problem anymore. It's happening right now in real people. Scientists have also found microplastics in testicles of rats, and in those cases, they were able to see the damage that it caused. Sperm counts dropped, testosterone levels plummeted, and testicular tissue was also harmed. The plastics found in these studies were usually things like polyethylene and PVC, so the same type of plastic that is used in water bottles and synthetic clothing. From what we know so far, these molecules take a very specific path into your cells and it looks something like this. First, the microplastics enter your body through ingestion or inhalation. Once they're inside, they pass through the gut lining and make their way into the bloodstream. From there, they cross the so-called blood testes barrier, which is a protective barrier like your blood-brain barrier. But microplastics are so small that they can sneak through this barrier and enter the organ. Inside your testicles, these particles will then often get trapped inside cells, especially in the Leydig cells, which make testosterone, and the Sertoli cells, which support sperm development. Now, how does this buildup affect your testosterone levels? This is where things get serious, and there are several different mechanisms, and none of them are good. First, we have endocrine disruption. So many plastics contain chemicals like phthalates and bisphenol A, and these are called endocrine disruptors, which means they can interfere with hormone function. In such a case, they can mimic estrogen, block androgen receptors, and mess with the hormonal signaling that tells your body to produce more testosterone. Next, we have oxidative stress. As you probably know, microplastics trigger inflammation, and this oxidative stress damages cells and reduces the activity of enzymes that are needed to produce testosterone. Also not great. And lastly, we have direct physical damage. So this was shown in rat studies, where microplastics reduced the size of the tubes where sperm is made, and it also damaged the Leydig cells that we talked about before. Obviously, if those testosterone-producing cells are injured, then your hormone production will also drop. If we want to estimate the real-world effect of all of this, then we also have a few studies to lean on. Unfortunately, all of them are animal studies, but I'm sure that we will see more human research in the future. So in these studies, what they did was expose rats and mice to microplastics and then analyze their blood and tissues. What they found was that they had their testosterone levels drop by up to 50%. They showed increased luteinizing hormone, which shows that their body actually recognized the problem and tried to compensate by pumping out more of this luteinizing hormone, which is meant to counteract the drop in testosterone. And across pretty much all the studies that I could find, they also noted lower sperm count and lower sperm quality. On top of that, you sometimes have a mention of sperm deformities and markers of testicular inflammation. All this is pretty concerning, but will it have the same effect on you as a human? Not necessarily. Keep in mind that the rodents were bombarded with microplastics and the studies were meant to show extreme effects, sometimes with more than 2,000 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. This would equal to around 140 grams of microplastics for a 70 kilo or 155 pound man. That's nearly half a cup of plastic particles ingested every day. But the general direction will probably be the same in us humans, so a significant drop in testosterone levels and all the associated downstream effects of it, and also worse sperm quality. Everyone knows that global testosterone levels and sperm count has been dropping for quite a while now, and this just shows that microplastics are part of the reason why. Now, it's not all doom and gloom though, because there are real actionable things that you can do to reduce your exposure and also to help your body push the microplastics out again. 
I go over them in more detail in other videos, but the cliff notes are basically that one, you want to reduce plastic exposure. So you want to avoid plastic bottles, packaging and synthetic clothes as much as possible. Instead, you want to use glass or ceramic and also don't microwave food and plastic containers. This is all pretty obvious. Next, you want to support your elimination organs and overall detoxification capabilities. So support things like liver function, bile flow and lymphatic drainage. Also, there are targeted plastic elimination pathways, and this could be things like sauna because plastic has been found in sweat, so we can theoretically sweat it out, and also sulforaphane, which has been shown to activate the NRF2 pathway, which helps push out stored microplastics from cells. Pushing out plastic from cells is often one of the biggest problems because of their small size, they get trapped in immune cells. And so far, it has been very difficult to get them out again, but sulforaphane seems to be a very promising compound to support this. And the last thing you want to do is optimize your testosterone naturally. So get enough zinc, vitamin D, selenium, magnesium, and boron, for example. Avoid xenoestrogens like the BPA that we talked about before, and sleep well, lift weights, and manage your stress as much as possible. Obviously, each of these steps is a rabbit hole in and of itself, but I will link relevant videos in the description for you to click through. Many of these things really come down to just leading a healthier lifestyle, which you should be doing anyways. I do also have a detox masterclass that walks you through this step by step. It will be helpful if you don't have time to research all these topics yourself and need a proven protocol to eliminate not just microplastics, but also heavy metals and excess estrogen. It goes over diet, supplements, and specific elimination pathways for all of these toxins. I will also include it in the description under my programs. All in all, the data on microplastics is definitely concerning and will affect the average man quite a bit. But if you know what you're doing, then there are a lot of things to counteract this problem and help you stay in good health. 